Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this Blitz Chess postmortem, postmortem of my Blitz game number uh, 419. I had the white pieces and kicked off with e4. Um, oh, before I get into the game, uh, I just wanted to mention that uh, I've got a new layout here. I'm recording a larger screen area, and then what I did at the same time is I also uh, increased the font size over here in these two windows. So hopefully, uh, when this uh, area gets shrunk down to the small YouTube window, this will still be visible. And also when it's blown up to the large size, hopefully it'll be a, a clearer image than it was before. So um, anyway, if you notice the difference, uh, please let me know in the comments if you like it or don't like it, think it's better or worse. Thanks. Okay, let's go on with the game. My opponent played uh, d6. Well, let's back up. While I'm here, I, I notice the color bars are much more visible now than they were before, so maybe I should explain these. The, the green bar is the number of wins with white from this position, and the red bar is the number of losses, or wins with black, uh, depending on your point of view. And the gray bar is draws. So this gives you an idea of uh, what kind of advantage white has over black in any particular line, and also how drawish an opening is. So you'll see the gray bar will shoot up in very drawish openings compared to uh, the green and the red bars. Okay, so d6 is a bit of an unusual move. And then I play bishop c4. You see there's only one game in the database which ended in a draw, so not, not particularly significant. Uh, a single game is not, uh, not a good statistic. Okay, I played bishop c4 here, still trying to go for a, a setup similar to the bishop's opening. If I can't get it exactly, maybe I can get something like it. My opponent plays knight f6, and um, I just defend the pawn with d3. And the idea is to play uh, f4 later, supported by my uh, bishop. So something like that. My opponent plays h6, and um, actually he allows me to get quite an advantage just by his uh, somewhat relaxed play. I go f4, and uh, now he moves this knight a second time. There's, this is an idea in some openings. I don't think it's particularly good here, but sometimes you want to get the knight out of the way of uh, a potential e5 pawn push. And, uh, but the knight is not going to stay there. It's in the way of the bishop and the other knight, although the other knight can come out to uh, c6, of course. Um, so it's, it's, it's quite a time-consuming way to play these, these moves. And um, so I do build up quite an advantage here. And uh, it'll, it'll show in the chess engine evaluation. See, it's already giving me quite an edge. Bishop g7, although it's, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's one thing to have an edge in the evaluation. It's another thing to actually win the game. He plays... Uh, a very solid kind of setup, so it's it's difficult to crash through. Anyway, I play c3. This blunts his bishop and also maybe intends a build up with d4 if he allows it. He goes a6, and uh, he does allow it. So I've got the big center now. He goes e6, bishop e3. Just keep developing my pieces, castles, and now I play the peculiar move rook f2. Probably uh, continuing to develop is the logical way to play here. Uh, the chess engine also likes the idea of repositioning the bishop down to d3. So interesting ways to play. So rook f2, not the best. And uh, he could start to uh, get back into the game with some moves like knight f6. Um, but he doesn't, uh, he continues to play in a somewhat uh, relaxed fashion here. And um, I, I keep my edge. Uh, and I finally finish my development. b5. And uh, let's see, knight f1, I want to get my piece over to the king side, my, all my pieces over to the king side. I'm preparing to just attack in that direction. Probably uh, want to reposition the bishop here and attack along this diagonal and bring my knights into the game. Looks like um, should have a pretty good game from here. He goes e5, and um, right now I could take it. There's an even better opportunity later. So knight g3 is still a good move, rook b8. And uh, yeah, right here is, is my chance to strike. I haven't quite finished getting getting every piece into the right position, but uh, these pieces here can get into uh, shape pretty quickly. The queen just needs to lift up and the rook needs to come over. So, um, so I can unwind these pieces pretty quickly and uh, get them into the attack. So it's just uh, a good moment right here to strike with d takes e5. So we take a look at this. Uh, he would take back and then I could push on with f5 going after his uh, g6 pawn. And, well, you see some ideas like this uh, later in the game, but this is probably a good opportunity to strike. I keep um, not playing the uh, pawn move. I wait for him to take, which he finally does. And uh, this is still good for me. 
he had a better way to play yeah with knight a5 chasing my bishop that was kind of what i was expecting uh, whenever he takes if he takes this pawn it brings my pawn into the center and i have a a big center here that's uncontested and if he takes uh, the other pawn if he takes the um he takes the <laughs> I can't let's get rid of those arrows if he takes the f-pawn I'll take back with a piece and that'll open up the f-file for me so whichever way he takes that's gonna help me out but he doesn't have to take he can continue maneuvering with his pieces and that's probably what he should do okay so he takes and now I really do build up a, a pretty big attack he goes knight e7 and I push on with f5 so I did get the the right idea at some point and uh, after knight f6 he wants to stop the pawn from coming forward Looks like I can play um, e5 at this point and just continue breaking through, and that's that's the strongest continuation. F takes g6, still good. Takes. Now bishop to c2 is not. I think this is what gives away the advantage. At this point, uh, I, there's this interesting tactic with knight g5, just uh, opening things up, but I don't have to play so quickly. h3 is an important move. What I'm missing here is there's a threat. I was I was thinking about my own... Uh, pieces and what I can do with them, and I was missing my opponent's threat, which is to come in to knight g4 and hit these two pieces. So the move h3 makes a lot of sense right here, just to keep his knight out of there. And um, also knight h4 is is a good move because that'll initiate some exchanges on the f file um, and put pressure on his knight, keep it keep it from moving away. I think. Let's see. Well, let's try this out. If I play knight h4, can he play? Can he play knight g4 anyway? He should. Then I can ex exchange one rook. Bishop takes. Pulls his bishop away. And then uh, rook to f7 check. I can invade with my rook. Okay, so that's that's an interesting way to play. The king goes to g7. I can grab. Oh, rook takes f8. Check leads to a mate. Oh, because um, it is a discovered attack on the king. Huh. Okay, uh, so that's good. That is good for uh, white, so he can't play knight g4 really in that circumstance. Anyway, what I did was I was ignoring this knight g4 threat and played bishop c2, and he wasn't. He spotted this, and uh, suddenly he's equalized. So, so my uh, advantage that I had throughout the game up to this point disappeared <laughs> in a single careless move, which is uh, the nature of chess. Okay, uh, rook e2. I didn't want to give up my rook, so but he gets um, that good attacking bishop. And uh, like I said, he's got an equal position here. He goes bishop g4. And uh, actually, he's even getting a little bit better because I start uh, missing things now. I missed that knight g4 idea. And what I'm missing now is uh, he's got threats on the d-pawn, which is often a weakness. The d-pawn and this diagonal towards the king, it's often a weakness after you push the f-pawn forward and the e-pawn forward. So this pawn is sitting out here undefended. And... Uh, and the bishop can hop in on this diagonal with uh, with good effect. You see that in the game. So uh, I play, uh, oh, it's black's move here. He plays knight d5, taking advantage of this pin. My queen is sitting here unprotected, so I can't take. Uh, so I drop back my queen. So now I'm threatening to take his knight, but he got his knight to f4 with that little maneuver. So pretty, pretty good play. I kick the bishop with h3, but like I said, I was ignoring this threat to the d-pawn. He can now just take my knight and then take here. So uh, that's a problem. <laughs> anyway, he just dropped his bishop back, and I played knight h4, which uh, would have been a good attacking move, as we saw a few moves earlier, but it's a bad move here because it ignores the second threat. So, so one careless move uh, made the game even from a winning position, and a second careless move uh, turns it to a loss, and my opponent was really just uh, winning at this point with this skewer and the extra pawn. See if I can get the color of the arrow to be red. There we go. So uh, what to do? I just uh, move my king out of the way and he picks up the exchange here. And black is just better. So let's continue on. This is a long game. He hits my knight, which drops back to f3. Queen e6, setting up threats against h6. Knight g1, defending things. So I managed to hold on and survive through this part. I'm just playing on, hoping that uh, I can live long enough to uh, <laughs> maybe wait for him to make a mistake. Um, so, But he, he plays this part pretty well. So brings his rook over. And, uh, well, let's just go forward a few moves. I think um, all this is pretty reasonable. He 
black is keeping the advantage through this whole sequence. Although uh, I, I managed to survive, so he gave me a few chances. But this is the next critical moment. Um, his bishop is loose here, and I push this pawn forward to attack his queen. Uh, his best move may be just to uh, <clears throat> give up the exchange here by taking with the rook. He's still winning, This and this simplifies a lot. After I take, he can take with the queen. And now the material's even, because he's given back the exchange, but he has two extra pawns. He has threats on this diagonal with the pushing the pawn to h4 and hitting my knight. So he's just uh, in excellent shape. He could probably win easily that way, or he could move the queen to e7, maybe even stronger. And, um, yeah, the, the engine changed its mind after looking at that position for a while. So just rook takes e5 is the simplest way to win anyway. Uh, instead, he took the pawn, maybe didn't notice his bishop was hanging, and suddenly I'm back in the game with even a slight edge, but I'm very low on time. I've been uh, struggling to survive, and I don't play the most precise moves here. So we game continues, um, and uh, we get to this position, which is just crazy complicated. And, uh, you know, he's attacking my queen, uh, I'm attacking his queen. And uh, there's this great tactic here I wanted to point out that uh, would still save the game for me at this point. I was starting to feel pretty desperate by now, but actually I'm still winning. But I have to find this one move. You see, it's the only move that wins. Queen takes g6 check. So uh, if you want to try and figure out the idea, you can pause the video here and look at it. Okay, after queen takes g6 check, there's only one legal move. His king is in check, the queen's defended. He's got to take, and that takes the rook off of this uh, f5 square. So knight f5 forks the king and the queen. Pretty nice, and I get the material back. So the king moves uh, to g5, and I take... And uh, well, I've got two pieces for the uh, the rook, and maybe a slight edge. I guess it's a little dangerous for his king to take there. Oh, bishop takes g6. I, I just win the rook, so he he needs to move his rook away, and then uh, and then the game continues, but with an edge for white. <laughs> okay, well I didn't find that, uh, but he didn't find the uh, the best response either. After rook takes f4, uh, he can win just by taking the rook. Instead, he played queen g5. And we get a position that's about even. And even here, the position is still even. I just need to play the move uh, g3. But I ran out of time uh, looking for the right move here. And uh, so that's how the game ended with a loss. So, uh, well, I, I made enough mistakes to deserve the loss. So uh, anyway, uh, that's, that's how it ended. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, commentary. Uh, leave any comments you have in the section below. And um, yeah, if you notice anything about the display size, uh, if you like it better or worse or the layout, uh, let me know. So see you later. Bye.